What's good with it in the hood with it? Welcome back to the collective clips where you already know we're gonna get it in, man. And you know, a lot of people got at me because I dropped a short the other day um about the movie Felon, and there was a lot of people, and it surprised me that didn't know about the movie Felon. So I took a little compilation, man. All right, put together a little compilation of some key moments in the movie, um, what the movie is about. Um, and it's kind of going to give you a little bit of a, a, a background, or I'm going to give you the background as we watch these clips, man, and react to them. Uh, the movie fell in. I wanted to speak to the authenticity of this movie. You know, I've watched a lot of prison movies. We've all watched American Me, you know, Blood In, Blood Out that had prison scenes. Um, so many other movies that had prison scenes, but it seems like, you know, this one and the movie Shot Caller were probably the closest to the California prison system that I seen. Now they were both they were both based on white men, um, both based on woods, um, and kind of had a similar story as far as an individual that wasn't in the game, wasn't about the street life, didn't live that life, that got incarcerated um into that street life. So, you know, um, this movie right here in particular, Felon. You know, uh, this individual, this cat, um, he finds himself, you know, caught up in a situation where he's new to the system. He's new to the life, period, and doesn't know where to begin, man, and gets led astray right from the beginning. Now, um, this movie does focus on the Corcoran, Corcoran Gladiator Wars that were real, that happened, man. For those of you that don't know about the Corcoran uh, Gladiator Wars, um, it was a time in the history when inmates, convicts, man, were placed on these yards, these group yards uh, in the shoe, and the COs were betting on their, you know, their demise, betting on them. Um, there was a lot of fights that were set up, a lot of uh, enemies or people that were supposed to be segregated away from each other, put together um, just for the amusement of the COs. Um, and it was treated like the Colosseum of the Roman Colosseum, like gladiator wars, you know, whoever lost. Uh, would be, of course, punished for that because, of course, there were COs losing money on them. Um, it was just a, it was a crazy time. There are people who lived it in real life. So this is kind of based on that. Um, but the movie, you know, uh, uh, it's a sad existence living in a place, you know, where if you're not built for that, if you're not set up for that, um, I can only imagine, you know, people going through it. I met a guy before that actually went through some of the same things. You know, he was a banker. He got locked up, got into a car wreck, man. His friend died. He caught a manslaughter. And the next thing you know, he's having to go through the motions. Now, he adapted, and most people do. Um, but this is a, a good movie, man, to show you um, that prison is not for everyone. Anyways, let's get to the movie, man. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, it's just clips that I comprise. Now, this one right here is his first bus ride when he's getting to prison. So let's let's react to it. Do yourself a favor. When we get down to the yard, get down for your fucking race war. Sling it with the first fucking monkey who opened his mouth. I'll back you up. Don't you fucking worry about it. Now, as you could already see, man, um, I love the authenticity, the, the authenticity of this movie. I can't even speak this morning. Spence off. Um, broken window, bus ride, man. You see this guy, he's pulling something about, you know, the, the, the secret spot, the West Watson spot. Um, there's about something's about to go down, man. Now, this guy doesn't know anything, he doesn't even know where he's going. Um, and it's about to, his life is going to change over this one incident. So uh, let's see what happens. Pulled a little piece out, a little something, something. It's jumping off. What? <laughs> Got him. <laughs> so. So the movida is going down, right? He's basically getting blasted. Now, I don't know. the They don't tell you the backstory to why this guy gets blasted, um, but it happens. You know, um, any chance that you can catch up to someone who's in bad standings or or maybe told on you or whatever the reason may be, man, whatever the, 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 the reason is behind the situation, you know, this guy 
uh, spotted, you know, somebody. And you could actually tell by the way the other guy looked at the back to set up the diversion by taking flight on the black dude that it was all set up. Um, it was about to go down. He knew that he was going to be in close proximity to an enemy or someone that had to go. Um, and he didn't even wait to get to the prison, man. He got he got off in the bus. Now, I've seen people spit on each other in the bus. I've seen people try to rush each other. You're handcuffed, shackled up. So it's hard to really uh, uh, do something. There have people that have had cuff keys that have slipped the cuffs. Um, I remember one time this guy got into a headbutting competition. Both of them got split. Uh, so it happens. You see, he pulled a little piece out. That's authentic, man. You know, I could say that for sure. You know, you don't expect him to pull out a big old bone crusher, these swords that you see on TV. You know, he pulled out a nice size little piece, just enough to do damage and put in the work. Um, and you can see the other guy um, who's just getting to prison is freaked out. Now, the skinhead that was talking to him plays a pivotal role in this movie. Um, and I just did a video about him on my other channel, man, Johnny Lewis, who played the actor in this movie. He or the actor who played the guy in this movie. This um, that guy was aware. You could tell he's done time, man. He already knew what time it was. He's seen the movida going down. So let's get back to it. Mm, 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 mm. We have a major four one five in the back of the bus. Multiple inmates involved. We have an ERT unit dispatched from ready. Sorry, buddy. Take one for the team, Wood. And that's that. Now, as you can tell, man, um, the guy who put this move down, man, basically is somebody. So he hands the piece off to this kid, um, wipes the blood on his shirt, basically with, with just his eyes letting the kid know, you're taking this beef, homie. You're going to ride this one out for the brothers, fella. And that's just it. Um, you know, eventually, man, you know, I don't got that part, but this guy, he actually dips the knife off to this, this cat that doesn't even know what's going on. But you can see the look on his face right now, man. He's shocked. He just seen someone get hit, murdered right on a bus in front of him. Um, he don't know what to do, you know. So let's get to it. Gone. Corcoran Prison. You need yard respect. This means the seller is a bad guy. I heard he's got his. So in this case, man, this is where the authenticity um, comes into question with me. You know, there are some guys that are well respected. Some of the old timers, lifers that have been down pre politics, uh, pre all the shit that goes on nowadays, um, and they're they're given a lot of respect. You know, maybe they've gotten a lot of bodies. You know, at different prisons, um, they're just respected because of the way that they. They do their time. A lot of old school convicts got that respect. They've earned it. You know, back in the 70s and 80s, um, the B numbers, of course, C numbers. These guys, you know, based upon your number, the way you've carried yourself, um, the way you've acted while in prison, uh, you'll be judged, of course, uh, based off the content of your character and, you know, what you've done. This guy in the movie has a lot of respect. Um, so he's actually in the shoe on what is considered a group yard, which they used to have group yards. Um, but during the Corcoran Wars, um, I'm not too sure because I was not there during the Gladiator Wars, but I will tell you that I've heard, you know, um, that they would only put two to three groups out at a time. They would put, say, the whites and the blacks, um, and then they'd get off. Everybody was on site, the north or the south or or the south and the blacks. And it was just a, a, a constant rotation of people um, handling their business. There was a time that I heard that you know, your lights were on. If you turned your light off, that meant you were done. You weren't going to go out to yard and then you were considered trash. You were no good anymore because you didn't make yourself available to the yard. Um, as far as the Mexicans go, you will hit every yard, man. Um, yard is mandatory uh, no matter what, no matter if you had two or three enemies. And that sometimes they would put two or three people out there um, and it would just be you. You had to handle your business. So anyways, this cat, um, you know, he's very respected. And it's showing you the respect that he's getting on this yard. To some of the shot calls. Here we go. How you doing? There's a guy standing by me in this way. Hey. Bodie, they're kind of skinhead. Hey, wait, Santa Clarita. Yeah. Welcome to the jungle, huh? She's no joke, is it? Yeah. Thanks. Hey, shut the f angry man. Samson says you're solid. So you two are in brotherhood then? Nah, man. 
I don't want to put no work in no ladders. So this is basically showing you how, you know, this guy is hooking up with his people. You know, everything is political in prison. Everything is drawn on racial lines. You know, you stick with your own. It's just what it is, man. You stick with people that look similar to you, similar to you or have similar beliefs. That's the way you're going to get by in prison, especially in California. You know, other states do things differently. You know, other people interact um, and it's all good. They're not tripping off the racial aspect. But in California, it's very political, a very racial place. Um, so you have to stick with your own. In this scene, he's going with his own people, man. They're basically giving him the rundown of what's going on. Now, that's a wood and a skinhead right there. And you can already tell, man, um, the differences with the wood and the, the woods and the skinheads are the skinheads are a little bit more political, whereas the woods um, are just doing their time and sticking with their people, man. Uh, but they're giving them the rundown. Let's see what they tell them. So why that guy gets stabbed on the bus? How's a drug dead man? Little Nazi odes. So hey, taxed. Like mm -mm. you said, keep handling business and do as you're told them. We'll get it down for you. Trust me, you'll need it. I like that. As you can see, um, the skin right here <laughs> was giving up a little too much information. And he gets cut off by his bigger homie. Basically, hey, homie, don't worry about why or how or who. Just fucking know that we got you if you need us. You're going to put in work. You'll get your fucking hands dirty like the rest of this wood, right? And that's it. Um, you'll see how it combats to haunt this, this skinhead guy. Um, he was just doing a little too much. And on the yard, man, you mind your own or your own will remind you. You don't speak on situations that are above your pay grade, man. You just, you know, shut up. Uh, this guy didn't need to know that. He, of course, he's a lummy dummy. He's new. He's a new booty. He's fresh. He's going to ask questions, but that doesn't mean you have to give answers. Let's see what happens. Thanks. You can't take that away. Education and politics. I feel like I really let him down. You will. If you don't make it out of here. But you're in the car, right? In the car? It means you're clicked up with somebody. The game. So as you can tell, these are sellies. Now, this is the guy that was respected in the yard, been doing time for a long time. It's authentic the way they show him sitting right there on the toilet. He's just sitting down having a conversation. Um, and that's what it is in prison, man. You're going to be right there in close proximity to the toilet. The toilet's going to be at your feet. There ain't nothing you can do about it. The toilet is utilized for, of course, what you do in it. And of course, bird baths. Um, we used to keep our toilets shiny as fuck, man. Uh, people take pride in their cell, keep it as clean. I've seen people wax their floors, shine their mirrors, their toilets or whatever they have. Um, you got to take care of your pad. Keep your pad clean, man. Cleanliness is next to godliness. And uh, that's real. You need God. So um, in this scene, he's basically gonna, about to give him the rundown into politics and what's going on in the yard. You know, um, he feels bad for the, for the fresh fish, man. He wants this guy to get out and go back to his family, but he's basically giving him the game, telling him if you click up, if you involve yourself with the gangs and what's going on in this yard, you're probably not going to make it back. So he's already assuming that this guy, um, because of who he's seen him function with on this yard, um, is part of you know the movement, part of doing what they do. He is not. He's just respected as an old school convict that walks alone, which I haven't seen too much of that. Uh, being locked up, but I guess it does happen. So let's let's see what happens here. <clears throat> Just hope you don't think all they want you to do is run out the schoolyard and yell nigger. How do you make it on your own? Perception is reality. I chose to create mine others chose to accept it perception is reality that's uh, that's one of the coldest lines i ever heard he's absolutely right basically what he's telling him is he put out this perception of hardcore crazy man don't fuck with me i'll catch a body and people chose to believe it people will bait and this is in life in general not only prison or gangs people will judge you and base you off what they think you know, that's called judging a book by its cover. If you put out an aura, if you put out, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the ways that you do things and they perceive that to be real, they're going to believe it no matter what. You know, so basically perception is reality. He put out there that he was a certain type of way, even though he may not be. You know, he might have caught a body just for self-preservation because he knew that was what he was going to have to do to protect him. He doesn't want to join or get involved with the with the politics or the gangs on the yard. Um, so he chose to be a one man gang to do his own thing. And people respect it because they are scared of the unknown. A lot of people are, man, not necessarily scared of the man, but scared of the unknown. 
Um, so he's about to give him the rundown into the politics and what's going on in prison. Let's let's trip out on this because this is as authentic as it gets. I could tell you right here, man, um, watching this movie, this is as close to real as real can get. Who was that guy you were talking to out of the yard? What is this, 20 fucking questions? <sighs> His name's Oso. He's a southern shot caller. Means he's got the keys to the house. Means none of his soldiers would make a move. I would say so. I don't know. I mean, how do you know who's with who? So right now he's about to give him a little history lesson. Um, he's going to give him klecha or education. This is what we would call education in prison and jail, you know. You need someone who's been around, uh, not to lead you by the hand, but to point the direction you need to go. And right now he's about to point him in his direction. Basically, let him know what's up, man. So he's not out there like a fish out of water, because I, you could tell a person that's barely got to prison that's never been there. Their eyes are big. They're looking at everything. They're moving too fast. Um, and that can create an atmosphere or an area where people are untrusting of the guy, thinking that he might be there to set people up or that he's going to do a move so they get rid of him. Or... You know, they could take it as a, a victim. He can, he's going to be victimized, extorted, um, harassed or whatever, bullied based on the fact that he doesn't know anything. You know, you're in a prison full of predators, people that are at the top of the pecking order, man. Um, they look for individuals they can utilize. That's just what it is, man. A thousand different ways to make money, a thousand different ways to utilize somebody. Um, that's facts. That's what everybody was taught or well, at least what I was taught. So he's about to give him the rundown. Let's trip out. Okay, finish. I'll be the good veterano and teach you prison politics, but you're going to do something for me. And what? Stay away from me in the yard. Get the fuck away from me. I understand. No, you don't. This is my world. Until death do us part. You're only a tourist. Lifer. All right, first lesson for woods like you and me. If it ain't white, it ain't right. Prison is not about street gangs. It's about race. Exactly, man. Um, all the street gang stuff, all the activity that you, all the work that you've put in, that you thought you put in, in, in the streets, it, it's not about that no more. You're getting in there. And like I said, California is very racial, man. It's all divided up in between racial lines and prison gangs. And that's just what it is. So here we go. Um, this, like I said, is authentic as it gets, man. Hispanics are cut in half. You've got the northerners and the southerners. And trust me, they're always at war. But the blacks, you get a whole mixture of gangs who pretty much forget their beefs and unite with the Asians and the Pacific Islanders. Don't Others. bother trying to figure out who's who. They all hate you. Then you get the skins in the woods. Nearly all the whites follow the Aryan Brotherhood who run the show. Gangs underneath them will try to recruit you, build up their numbers, get you to sling their drugs, stab who they don't like. You pay attention to who's calling the shots with the whites. They'll need to do something when you don't handle business. I'll handle you. What's up? How you doing, man? You see that predator looking motherfucker over there? <clears throat> so now I'm going to take you into a glimpse. And that was dead on, man. Dead on, you know, uh, what an OG would tell you. Basically, that's that's how it is. So now this one is Gladiator Wars. I'm going to take you into a glimpse of what actually was happening in Corcoran in them times. Um, how individuals that were enemies were put on the same yards together. And what would happen, man? So let's take a look at it. He's getting to the yard. Go with your people. And you notice the seals are just watching. They don't prevent anything. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. You see how everybody knows what time it is? That's how prison is. Everybody knows what's going to happen. If there's going to be a removal, if someone's going to get hit, everybody knows and they're just waiting, man. It's an electricity you can cut with the knife. It's crazy the way it is. It's just, I mean, prison is prison is what prison is, especially in California. So let's look at the gladiator wars. That's on site. Oh, fucking told you, man. Gladiator school's on. I got 10 on Gonzalez. Shit, I got that action. William's gonna fuck him up. Do something we do to keep it interesting. That's supposed to fight anyway. Who you got? I'm with you, Lieutenant Gonzalez. Got a boy, Sergeant. I got Williams. 
course you do. Now, as you can see, everybody kind of just steps back and lets them handle their business um, because they are two different groups that, well, you know, this is where it's kind of inauthentic or unauthentic, however you want to say it, because it would, I've seen other Southern Mexicans on the yard, other Northern Mexicans, other blacks, you know, it would have been a one jump, all jump thing. Everybody would have been involved. It would have been a melee. Um, I guess these two individuals might've had personal beef, whatever the case may be, they're trying to symbolize the gladiator wars. It was not exactly like this. I mean, as far as guys get coming straight out the you know, the Sally Port and rushing out the door. Yes, that was truth. That was facts. But as far as everyone else sitting down and just letting it happen, no, they would have got off. Everybody would have got off. Shit. I know for you, dog. And the winner is. Tip of that asshole. Ugly situation. Now, as you can tell, um, they're basically demonstrating and showing you how <clears throat> they punished both the people. After the fight was done, both got shot, man. They got shot with, uh, it looked like either bean bags or they're these uh, rubber bullets. You know, I got hit in Jamestown with the rubber bullet, man. It's no joke. Um, but, you know, they get put down uh, to prevent, you know, the yard from going crazy or going off. Like I said, man, it would have already been a melee. Um, but they're just showing you, you know, how it was. Hollywood. Uh, bitch ass Uncle Tom House nigga. Yeah, you, Jackson. You ain't shit without that guy. You know it. Oh, wait. Up first. Alone. It's feeling some type of way. I think I'm scared some whole time, nigga. Fuck you and the hole. Now, there were cops that would get off with you, man. You know, uh, a man is a man. You disrespect a man. Uh, he's going to take it how he takes it. Um, but a lot of these cops knew better than to put their hands or get into arguments with certain individuals who had status or individuals that were part of something, um, because it could get ugly fast. But let's look at it. Who said you was going to the hole? Put him in the review room. Uncuff him. Mm, mm, mm. Lieutenant. Yep. Took off the belt. I'm done. Like, I'm done now. What the fuck is that now? What? Herman Halsey, Dominus, sir. Let everybody see. Basically, he put the demo down, man. An example, you know, I've seen that happen before in Tracy, man. There was a guy talking shit out of his door. Um, cop went in there, put the demo down, came out, left him in a cell, didn't take him to the hole, didn't take him to the infirmary, left him in a cell to leak and let everyone know, just kind of looked on the tear like, that's what it's all about. You disrespect me. That's how I'm coming. Um, and that's just what that was. Still the reigning champ. Everybody see this? Now imagine being in a place, man, where <laughs> you're basically held captive, told what to do, you know, told when to eat, told when to piss, um, everything. And then, you know, if you act at a turn or, or try to fight back, fight the system back, man, this is what happens to you. This is this is a cold existence, man. But it's facts. Yard removal. So what you're about to see right here is an actual removal. This, to me, is one of the most authentic scenes ever in any movie about prison. Because the way that they slash this guy's face, the way that they whack him, the way that um, it's done, this is all coming full circle. If you remember in the beginning, the guys were on the bus. The guy gets handed the piece. The skinhead gets handed the piece, basically told you're going to take the case. Well, he actually dipped it off to this guy, the new guy. Um, which is the reason he's in the shoe. Now he's a little bit more seasoned. He has a good celly that's giving him the rundown. He knows what time it is. Um, now he's got to go meet the big man, uh, the shot caller, the Yavero, um, to kind of figure out, you know, where he stands in all this shit. 
um, and everything in prison gets seen. There's eyes everywhere. There might not be camera, but everyone's always watching everything. So let's watch what happens. Most authentic part of the movie period. Regulation time, DP, basically. Discipline. That is my bitch, huh? Fucking lame. Should have known after all the shit we did for you. Mm -hmm. We? Shut your hole. As far as I'm concerned, you're the fucking lame. Mm hmm. There we go. I saw how you passed the shank on the bus. Mm hmm. Got him. Throw the piece in the toilet, get rid of it. No evidence. Um, as you can see, this was a situation where he thought he got away with something. He was trying to act too tough. Remember, I told you about acting too tough. You can't do that on the yard. People will recognize that man and they'll they'll <laughs> they'll show out. Um, so in this case, that was one of the most authentic removal scenes I've ever seen. You know, it happened in the blinds. They already knew what it was. It was planned out. Um, and you might think everything's going to happen to one person, um, but you could be the victim. You know, you never know in prison. So let's see how it all plays out, man. Very authentic movie, man. It's a trip. Weapon went in the toilet, Sarge. I saw it. No wood will touch you. If you want to ride with us, come see me. Otherwise, you're on your own. So basically, <clears throat> he gained his respect. He gained his respect in the eyes of the people who it counts to. Because it does count to certain people. The other guy got removed for his misdeeds, man. Um, and that goes to show you, uh, just because you go to prison and you're not prepared, doesn't mean, man, you can't gain your respect. It's going to take a lot. You're going to have to earn it. It's not freely given. It's not easily given. Um, but that's part of the game. So anyways, getting back to the moral of this content and the reaction, this is the most authentic movie I see now. Of course, it's based on the wood car, uh, the whites. Um, so it has very minimal interactions with North or South. It does mention the Northerners and Southerners. Having been a Northenio, I could tell you um, the politics are a little bit different. But um, this watching prison movies, this is one that I recommend if you really want to see the grittiness and how true the truthfulness of it. Um, let me know. If you guys want me to review the shot caller, if you want me to review any other movie, man, I'll definitely do it with you. Um, react and review at the same time and let you know just how real it is. With that being said, man, I hope that you move smooth with a purpose. I hope that you enjoyed this content. I hope that you tap back in, man. Thank you. Everything is highly appreciated. There it is, man. The movie fell in. Go tap in. I think it's on Tubi or it might be on Netflix or, or whatever, man. You need to watch this movie. It's, it's a great movie. With that being said, thumbs up or thumbs down. Heavy's going to be the head that wears the crown. I'm going to continue to strive and struggle and struggle for mines. And that's all I can do, man. Thank you.